Okay. We are going to light, uh, we are going to light um, the candle for Lent. So throughout the weeks of Lent, we will, uh, we will keep the candle burning. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn it on. Jesus is the light of the world. So it will be burning throughout. This light will never go out until until um, Holy Saturday, the day before it will it will go out on the on the on the night of uh, the 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 on um, Easter Eve, on the night um, that will give birth to Easter morning, then the Easter candle will be will be up, will be up here and at the altar. So whenever we finish what we are doing here. At any given time, we will, um, hallelujah, hallelujah, we will take it back to the main altar. Hello, I am Idikai Mary, and um, we are having a one-day fast that begins from now, and it will also end at this time tomorrow. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, Holy Spirit, guide us and lead us throughout this 24 hours period. Just as Ezekiel saw an open heaven and then he received visions of God, we are asking that the heavens be opened for us during the course of these 24 hours of fasting and prayer and seeking the face of God and that our prayer will rise up like this incense sweet before God. Let God see the sacrifice of our time, our talents and of our being in his mysterious and marvelous and sweet presence. If you did not know Incense, sweet incense, also stand for when God sees us, he sees us as sweet, people who are really sweet. He, he enjoys us. That's also the incense speaks of the sweetness of who we are in his presence. And Geneva and Victoria and Anna, make sure you write what I've just said. Please write it exactly, play it back, go back, and then you type it exactly as I've said it. I've said it. I need it to be to be recorded properly. Yeah, that's who we are. And also our life, our our spirit, that's our real person, our mind, what we call our soul, and our body. God really enjoy. God really enjoys us a whole lot. That's how this thing goes. Rena, are you on the line? Hello? Yes, yes. Okay. Did you finish that thing? Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Now the, the, the service is on. Are you aware of that? Yeah. So just stay. I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for taking care of it. Um. So before God, if you are born again and spirit filled, um, I want you to be aware that God sees you as a sweet incense. Someone who is very sweet in his presence. That's why I always talk about you looking good, looking young, being nice in his presence. All right, let's go from here. Our prayers are also sweet in his ears and in his presence. Most of the things we do in the traditional churches is just a symbol. Baptism is a symbol. The candle is a symbol. The incense is a symbol. The clothes that we wear to celebrate the different services are just symbolic. There's not much about that. But the other side of try to make devils and demons out of out of things that are not supposed to be, out of things that are simply symbols. For example, baptism is an announcement that you are a Christian. You've you forsaken the world. You are now, you've entered into the deep things of God. You've entered into a life that is deeper than this world. I hope you are writing that down. That's the meaning of baptism. I hope you're writing it down. Annie, I hope so, Geneva and Victoria. Yep, and Mary too. Make sure you play back these videos and write out those things and type them out for me. Baptism means that you have you have entered, you are no longer cheap. You're no longer cheap. You've entered into something deeper than you with Jesus, with God the Father through Jesus. That's the meaning of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just want to make sure that I'm recording. Okay, it is. Um, let me announce to you. Um, let me announce to you the um, the Los Angeles con uh, session with Idikai Mary. The session is coming up. That program is coming up. The Los Angeles program is coming up very soon. It is April twentieth. 21st and 22nd and it will be happening at the Hilton's the Hilton's by Los Angeles Airport. Rena, am I right? That's correct. Okay. So our the, the flyer will come up I think by tomorrow, I don't know. Rene will put up the flyer and people will be able to go and register for the program. So Rene, you know how to put it together and put all the different things they can expect to be worked on in their lives. So April 20th to 22nd, 2018 Los Angeles program. If you allow because you don't have, uh, because you are afraid of spending your money, so you don't want to come into the presence of God and for your problem to be solved, then you are doing your thing. It means you don't love yourself. If I were you, if I live around the Los Angeles area, I will come, I will come for this program. And I know many of you are going to come out. This is going to be great. You're going to see physical instant manifestations of miracles, of God's divine presence and power. This is incredible. Now let's go. Um, we are going to, during this fasting, we are going to be looking at, we are going to be having very short, short programs. So you are going to see a lot of videos. Please try and keep up with it. Because it's going to be a whole lot coming up within 24 period, within 24 hours. You're going to have a lot of meditation, a lot of prayers, a lot of seeking God's face. So let's go. We will be using 1 Samuel chapter 2. We've already done 1 Samuel chapter 1. One of the greatest things I enjoy is 
looking at scriptures word by word, verse by verse, and chapter by chapter, this is where God's power is very strong with me, is this. Life is revealed. Dreams and plans, assignments and destiny is created or recreated or restored or renewed. God gives us mighty inheritance, supernatural inheritance. I decided, Rene, I will talk to you about that. There's something that I decided to do that I want you to take charge of because it's something that will, something that will make a lot of, I, the Holy Spirit told me that we are really going to prosper with that. So I like it. In Geneva, you will need to be aware of it and Mary. Mary, you need to be aware of it very strongly. We are going to be doing, throughout the time that we will be in the presence of God, we will be using 1 Samuel chapter 2. So let's go with verse 1. And Hannah prayed. Hannah prayed. In the Hebrew it says, and she is praying. So when she came, when Hannah came and brought Samuel, a little boy, and leaned, she didn't say gave, she said, this is not, not, this is not a non-profit that I'm doing. What I'm doing is full profit. I'm giving my son to the Lord for full profit. That's why she used the word length to the Lord. I gave him to the Lord for what? For full profit. Supernatural profit, financial profit, all kind of profit you can think of. I am going, I am going, this, this child, this child is something special for me. Something profitable is in this child. Out of this child, God is going to reward me mightily. And Hannah is in praying. One of the things that we see about Hannah is her love to pray, her love for prayer. There were not repetitious prayers. There were not prayers prayed out of anxiety and doubt and fear. There were prayers that were done out of a reasoned, a strong faculty of reasoning and spirit that God is a rewarder. He hears our prayers, is interested in our needs. He will make us get our needs, our wants, and our wishes. They will all come to pass. Yes, wishes will turn to horses. Yes, prayers will turn to money and material resources and spiritual abundance and power. And Hannah prayed. So this is a woman who loves to pray. Why? Why is she praying again? She prayed before and she got a child exactly what she asks for. That's why I always say, ask, spend time to think through what you want to ask for and go ahead and ask for it. Make sure you have it documented. Relationship with God requires legal documentation. Please write that down. Relationship with God 
also requires legal documentation. And Hannah prayed. Why did this woman love to pray? Because in the place of prayer is the place of receiving. The place of prayer is the place where power is made. Power is generated. The impossible become nothing. His chains are broken. Devils give up and flee for their own lives. Why did Hannah love to pray? She prayed because she was talking to God. She loved to be in the presence of God. Please write this down. Prayer means presence. It is prayer being in this kind of bonding with God that produces in you power and the essence of God. Let me tell you what happened to Hannah when she was praying in chapter 1. Many of you think that pregnancy happens when only a man and a woman are together in a union. Many times real pregnancy happens before the pregnancy happens, before physical pregnancy happens. Many a time the money you are looking for is given to you in the place of prayer even before you see it. You see it come to you physically. You've already seen it manifested to you in the in vision and dreams and trances and in your thoughts processes. And Hannah prayed. Here we are going to see what she prayed for again. So that you are able to articulate and know that prayer is not just about asking for things, but prayers also has to do with exaltation. While I was preparing for this, the Holy Spirit told me about the three women who busted out in the Holy Ghost. Please write that topic for me so that I can write a book about that or use it for something else. Three women that busted out in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit erupted in their lives. Three women. These are Hannah. No, 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 no. They are not three. They are four. They are four women that busted out in the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. Not four. They are five. I'm going to see. I think there might be more. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, as I'm talking, it's reminding me. There was Miriam, the sister of Moses. She busted out in the Holy Ghost. And then there was Deborah. She busted out in the Holy Ghost. Then there was Hannah. She busted out in the Holy Ghost. Then there was Mary, the mother of Jesus. She busted out in the Holy Ghost. Then there was Elizabeth. She busted out in the Holy Ghost. Five women. Miriam. Even though Miriam was a racist. Even after seeing the wonders of God, she was a racist. And God punished her for that. So we see Miriam, Deborah, Hannah, Mary and Elizabeth, five women busted out in the Holy Ghost. And all this happened. How did, why did they bust out in the Holy Ghost? They busted out in the Holy Ghost because that word is very powerful. B-U-R-S-T-E-D. They busted out in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they received a triumph or they made a triumphant entry or God made a triumphant entry into their lives. 
Please, can you write this down exactly as I'm saying it? Why the busted out in the Holy Ghost? Please write it exactly I'm saying it, not as you think I'm saying it. Because that's what some people do. They write things for me, what they think. I want you to write it exactly the way I say it. Or go back and play the video. They busted out, these five women busted out in the Holy Ghost because they received glorified triumph. They made a triumphant entry into life. Please write it down like that. They made a triumphant entry into life. And God gave them success, great success. God wiped away their tears. God defeated their enemies. Please keep writing it. Keep writing, keep writing. God made them winners and champions. March 29, 30th and 31st, 2018. Fasting for champions. Have you gone and registered for that? Have you registered for that conference? Go online, itikaimeri.com and register. I'm telling you, if you were not a champion, you're going to become one. What we are doing today is just a foretaste of it. Hallelujah. And Hannah prayed. We need praying mothers. We need praying mothers who understand what it is to pray in the Holy Ghost. To bust out in the Holy Ghost. That's what prayer means. Prayer is defined as busting out in the Holy Ghost. Prayer is being passionate for what you want. Being passionate in the worship of God. Being passionate in the love of God. That's what prayer really means. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you become young. You become good looking. You look sweet. Your skin become tender, smooth, cushy. In the presence of God, God begins to pamper you. Your age mates will all be looking old. And you alone, you'll be looking young. They will all be broke. While you, you'll be getting richer. When you talk to them, you can sense their envy and their jealousy. While you yourself, you don't really, you'll be loving at them and pitying them. <laughs> and Hannah prayed. We need praying mothers who will be praying for us. Who will put us before God. Above all things else, to protect us and keep us alive by busting out in the Holy Ghost for us. Their prayers will give us everything we ever needed. Not mothers who come to criticize us, who will not stand up for us, who will not protect us, promote us, provide for us. Within their means, some of the greatest, the greatest phenomena you are ever going to experience is when you have a praying mother. That's why I so much love Anna. Anna of Norway, she, she, she loves to pray. That's why I love Mary very much. Those are people who pray in the Holy Ghost. Rene too. Pierre. I can go on and name people. On and on and on and on and on. Who I really know they pray. Victoria prays as much as she's learning. Many of you, you are catching up. So you're praying. Beatrice, the same thing. We need praying women. 
We need praying women. Please, we need them. Kai, we need praying women. Because we are going to depend. This, our present generation is going to depend on praying women. Yeah. We are going to depend on women who understand how to stand in the presence and in the power. Hallelujah. We want to stop here. Yeah, we want to stop here. I'll be I'll be back here ministering around three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock my time, central time. Because I will stay at the altar. When they release me, I'll come back here and start broadcasting. Then there will also be a broadcast around seven o'clock, which is a seven o'clock central, which is eight eight a.m. Eastern uh, Eastern Standard Time, Eastern. I'm going to deprive myself of sleep and food and drink because his presence is far more important to me than food and drink, than sleep. Because the sacrifice you are willing to do now will give you a throne tomorrow. Please write that down. The sacrifice you are willing to do today will give you a throne tomorrow. If you want to contact our ministry, it's 316-665-4400. Email us at edikaimary at edikaimaryministry.com I want to thank you very much for coming to come and be in God's presence. Holy Spirit, bless this fasting. Fill us with new energy, new power new abilities. Hallelujah. Go ahead of us to bless this fasting and the fasting that is coming, the fasting for champions. Go ahead to bless and to draw your people to Los Angeles. Let the next move of God begins with us. We are ready. Lord, you've set me aside to be the American spiritual guide, to be a guide to this nation and to the world. Bless your people who came out tonight and those who will be watching on the broadcasts and those who are watching through the live streaming. Lord, I pray that we come under the heaviness of your power and your presence. Let your weight fall on us. Amen. Also remember, Remember to sow, go and sow a seed, as the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you very much. You're welcome.